Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. We're going to be uh, ranking all 11 Spider-Man movies from my least favorite to my favorite because I do not hate any of the Spider-Man movies. I just, you know, some of them I just dislike a little bit less than others. I have been contemplating um, the last few days whether to include uh, the two Venom movies or not. Honestly, this morning I was like, no, let's just not do it. But then as I was setting up, I'm like, you know what, just go ahead and incorporate them as well. And then of course, I'm also gonna incorporate the animated movie um, into the Spider-Verse as well. So without further ado, we're gonna get through this. I always say fairly quickly, but you know, we're, we're gonna see, we're gonna attempt to do it fairly quickly. Of course, as always, this is my own personal list, you guys, mine, okay? This is how I like them. So, don't come at me in the comment section about you're wrong, this is that, no. There are no wrong lists. Everybody has their own list. What you can do is just let me know down below. Just be very nice, don't be a little grinch about anything. So, without further ado, let's get on with number 11, and that's going to be the very first Venom movie. I really didn't know what to think about this movie once, you know, it was announced that it was coming out. It just seemed kind of like a cool little little movie. And then I do love me some Tom Hardy. Oh, I like Tom Hardy. He's so sexy. He's sexy. Um, like this video if you agree that Tom Hardy's sexy. They did go more for like the goofier, funny side of things. Like the first, I don't know, like hour of the movie is kind of boring. And then then we get into some good stuff. This movie is one that with rewatch, I enjoy a little bit more and more each time. I remember the very first time that I saw it, I just really wasn't here for it at all. Also, I didn't really know if I was going to incorporate these two movies because honestly, I have forgot that they're part of the Spider-Man universe. The two, Venom uh, the two Venom movies are the only ones in the list that I did not rewatch before doing this ranking but yeah that is my number 11. uh coming in in 10th place would be the amazing spider-man 2. this is where we're gonna get into spoiler territory oh did i tell you we're gonna talk spoilers i don't know if i did okay so we're gonna be talking spoilers of course uh, well of course all these old movies you know we're just spoiler because it's old movies but i'm talking spoilers that go towards no way home i fall within that category of liking these movies a little bit more now that i've seen no way home because i did fall within the side that andrew garfield is just not spider-man for me i'm sorry i just i feel like i don't know i just felt hurt that toby Maguire wasn't gonna be spider-man anymore because toby Maguire is definitely my spider-man and then we get this new guy and i'm just like i don't i don't I don't know how I feel about you, Andrew Garfield, okay? I just don't. But now that I see No Way Home, I'm like, okay, I got you. And the Amazing Spider-Man 2, we do have Electro, which is played by Jamie Foxx, and oh, I did not like the look of him at all. I mean, even with the rewatch, I was just like, no. There's just a, a quite a bit going on in this movie, besides them killing on Gwen Stacy, which is still very, very shocking, because of course we know of uncle ben dying but not the love interest yes yes but he did get his little redemption there in the new movie of course it was so sweet wasn't it but they were trying to set up um so much things for the future for the amazing spider-man they were trying to set up a spider-man uh well the amazing spider-man 3 and then of course the sinister six the spin-off which of course did not happen because this movie did not do good in the box office both critically and audience we didn't like it we weren't jiggy with it or love interest so i'm being together breaking up being together that's too much drama for me that is too much i don't need all that in my life like i just want spider-man to do spider-man shit um yes i know that there's like relationship stuff you know but like that was just like to a whole other extent there with them i was just like no i love me some paul giamatti but this this role did not fit him at all i mean that russian accent he's just like yelling and then like you just kind of randomly put him in again at the end to be part of the sinister six again to kind of have that spin off and all that just didn't work moving on to number nine the amazing spider-man so andrew garfield's first spider-man movie again like i said earlier i just wasn't ready for a new spider-man i was just like you took my spider-man and you made it into something else i don't even know like even from the beginning i'm not gonna lie i was just like i don't know about this the amazing spider-man so now you think you're too good to just be spider-man you want to add the amazing to it i don't know like i said i'm not part of the comic book um life of course they wanted to kind of keep it the same from my spider-man movies but make it its own it's kind of like same same 
but different. Uh, we actually know of Peter's parents. Of course, we've always just seen uh, Aunt May and, and Uncle Ben. And you just heard, you know, you know that his parents died. And Andrew Garfield got the girl like this because, you know, Andrew Garfield is freaking hot, okay? All I'm saying is that my guy Toby, it took him like two movies because it was basically at the end of the second movie when he got the girl and then he had the girl in the third one. And then Tom Holland, too, same thing at the end of the movie. Two, part two, he got the girl, and then in part three, you know, he, it's his girl. But here, he got the girl in the first movie, like, early on in the first movie. All right, let's go ahead and move on, because I said I wasn't going to linger, and I am lingering. We're not here to review a movie, okay? We're here to talk quickly about a movie. Well, that makes Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Now, again, i only seen this movie once. I don't even remember it too well, to be honest with you, but I did review it for the channel. That's pretty much the only movie within this or oh, besides no way home that i'm gonna have a review on i did not go back to review any of the spider-man movies prior to this i know a lot of people did do that i chose not to i didn't have time for any of that so maybe next time oh maybe when into the spider-verse 2 comes out maybe i'll go back and re-watch i don't really want to rewatch. maybe i'll go back and that could be retro reviews no i don't want to do that either i focus my retro reviews on like first time watch type of deals you know what that was just like an out loud thought that did not work out for me we get like a really cool like bromance you know that's going on a real cool bond between brock and venom i really don't remember the movie i do like carnage because that's kind of what i was expecting more so from the first uh, venom movie just more like carnage more like Urgh. i did really like um uh woody harrison um he was really cool i liked what he brought to you know the character to the movie and everything like that it does have way more action though than um venom one and i feel like it actually does go a little bit quicker than the other one i do enjoy it more and if i had to choose between the first one and the second one on having to rewatch or recommend i would definitely recommend this one more coming in at seventh place would be spider-man far from home um now here at uh, spider-man all he wants to do is just you know go on vacation go to europe tell mj that you know he he loves her that he has feelings for her and everything of course his whole European trip basically gets hijacked by um fuck why am I forgetting everybody's name Nick Fury here the villain or the hero slash villain would be Jake Gyllenhaal as Mysterio I know when this was announced a lot of a lot of people were very very excited for this they're like perfect casting and everything of course once again I don't know this character from anywhere this is how i got introduced um to them well to him and i thought he was pretty cool you know like a mystery like mystery but i don't know like illusionist kind of guy that's basically what he is at the end um but again he is one that is more so of a villain and it's also one of i don't know how many other villains that we have that have of grief with tony stark and that's how we get a villain here so this was a pretty cool villain i'm not going to lie i know a lot of people do have this movie like way up higher unfortunately for me it was just kind of like uh, i don't know like it's just it's a little bit too much um of course he does out him as being peter parker there at the end coming in in sixth place which is more than likely going to be a big big surprise for a lot of you because i know a lot of people really really dislike this film I personally don't have a problem with it. Um, like I said earlier, I don't hate any of the movies. I just dislike some more than others. And until I got into like the YouTube movie community world is when I started hearing about the flaws within this movie. But up until then, I was just like, I don't have a problem. I enjoy the movie. And that's going to be Spider-Man 3, which is the last movie uh with my spider-man toby mcguire i've always enjoyed it um i mean yes it is the weaker of sam Raimi's toby mcguire's trilogy this is why it's so high up on my list but i also don't have a problem with it but sony really wanted to incorporate venom within this particular movie and sam Raimi didn't want to do it because he wasn't very comfortable you know he didn't really know the character too well but of course sony was like no you're gonna do it even sam Raimi. He doesn't like this movie either. He said it's awful. I don't think it's that awful, but whatever. Number five, and that is going to be Spider-Man Homecoming. Um, this is, of course, Tom Holland's first solo Spider-Man movie. Uh, we were introduced to him in one of the, the Avenger movies? No. Civil War. I haven't seen that movie, but I think that's where he's at. I've seen that airplane scene where he was, 
you know, he was part of it. I haven't seen all of it, but I think that's where it was, Civil War. One of the differences between um, this one and his origin story is that we technically don't have an origin story here. Um, it's just mentioned that he is bit by a spider, which I did kind of enjoy because at this point, we have had, you know, two previous Spider-Mans. I did enjoy just kind of like jumping into this character already knowing what he's about and not having to waste, you know, like, 30 minutes on the build-up. It's like, oh no, this is Spider-Man, we're good. You know, we know what's happening. Here also, we don't have an Uncle Ben. So that was something, honestly, I'm not even gonna lie. I, I didn't even realize that until I think we rewatched it this time. We're like, hey, there was no Uncle Ben. Like, what happened to Uncle Ben? Like, I guess she was just like a single person. <laughs> Before we actually saw No Way Home, Desiree and I were talking and we're like, wouldn't that be funny if Happy's like real name was Ben? And we did get happy's like real name and we're like oh it's not even close to bad you know my hate for <laughs> not really hate but like hate for you know new spider-man's kind of all went towards andrew garfield so by the time i was worn down already by the time i got to tom holland and i was more accepting of another spider-man coming my way oh poor andrew just had it so tough didn't he i really like the character the the villain of, of falcon uh right yeah falcon you guys, I don't know why I am blanking on all these actors' names. Oh, that is terrible. Michael Keaton, you guys. Michael Keaton. I love him as the villain. He's one of my favorite villains. I think he's, you know, he another one motivated by Tony Stark. Once again, Tony Stark. Tony Stark also does come out in this movie. Um, we have more high tech also. He has like a really like metal not metallic, um, metal i don't know it's too techy his his suit is is way too techy. i mean it's cool it's just way too techy way too techy for me i mean we do end up having him back into like his regular stuff all right guys last four before we do get there if you haven't already go ahead and give this video a like subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time that I post something new. In fourth place would be Spider-Man No Way Home. Yes, the newest Spider-Man movie. And we are going to be talking some spoilers here. So if you haven't seen the movie, I'll go ahead and make sure I put a timestamp so you can jump to the next one. To get the most benefit out of this movie, I definitely feel you should watch the other movies. You don't need to watch the Meta movies. Um, but they do mention it here just like a brief little like i fought an alien kind of deal that's about it so you don't need to really re-watch those and you wouldn't need to watch um into the spider verse because that one's not part of this movie either they do kind of give it a little shout out now i do understand this movie is not perfect by any means necessary the first uh, half of the movie you know it's a lot of a build-up thankfully my theater was a really good theater and we didn't go like batshit crazy when andrew garfield toby Maguire, you know came through the portals having all three spider-mans just kind of interact learning from each other the, the writers they like listen to the audience they listen to all the critiques and they just took all that and they incorporated it within this movie so like everybody got the notes that they needed to really take it up to that next level and gave and gave like better performances and i'm so happy that toby and andrew actually were part of the third act and it wasn't just like a quick like in and out like they were there desiree i did have her um do like a ranking just like randomly just to kind of see what it is and she actually has this one as her number one um out of all the 11 ones let me go here real quick about this little pop this is what happens when you're doing like midnight shopping i got the box and then it said something about a game and i'm like what the heck a game and i went oh people have been talking about my morales game so this is spider-man from the game but i'm a corp i'm i'm putting him as being spider-man miles morales from spider-man into the spider-verse i just kind of want to say that out there so i i messed up on him <laughs> when i bought that i'm still debating oh, i don't know okay i'm gonna switch three and two uh, i don't want to yeah i do no, we're not going to switch. Number three will be Spider-Man. <laughs> I know that a lot of people like have this as their number one or their number two. I totally understand. It's one of like the best like Spider-Man movies. Uh, definitely the best of the Tobey Maguire's trilogy. Uh, Doc Ock as the villain here was great. And again, took it to the whole other level 
<laughs> no way home but he had a great year and then you know he was still like the good guy but then you know he kind of went a little crazy but then there at the end you know he like redemption you know he's not gonna be known as the monster and of course one of the better like fight scenes between hero and villain there with the train and you know new york has his back and then it's also when mj finds out that spider-man and peter parker are the same one in fact even though he she did already kind of suspect because of the kiss uh, but it officially was confirmed at the end of the movie because once again Peter Parker doesn't get the girl until the end of the second movie. So coming into second place would be Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which is the animated movie. Now, this is one that when it first came out, when it, when it was first announced, I don't even remember if I saw a trailer for it. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I really don't remember. But I just had heard it was an animated movie, and I was just like, no, nah, that's not gonna be for me. Um, because I'm not really into like the animated um superhero cartoons like i can do live action but like when it comes to animated stuff like that like oh my god no so i kept hearing so many people talk great things about the movie and then it won an oscar and i was like okay okay so i want i gotta watch this now because i'm so stupid i missed it obviously in theaters and at the end of the day i ended up watching it on my phone when i was up flying somewhere so that was my ex first experience with into the spider-verse and i remember being up in the air finishing the movie and just being like oh my god you're so stupid like this would have been awesome to have a theatrical experience with this is where i got introduced to the spider-verse situation the animation here is actually really really great oh my god it's so good this is where we got introduced to miles morales well, I got introduced to Miles Morales, rather. Without further ado, coming in at first place would be none other than Spider-Man. The very first one with Tobey Maguire, my Spider-Man. And it's just because of pure, of course, nostalgia. Upon rewatch, it hasn't aged very well. I'm not even going to lie to you. It, it definitely hasn't. But in its defense, this was like the first of its kind. It was like the first official, like superhero movie, like higher tech. I mean, we had did already have like um blade and x-men kind of deal but this kind of was to a different scale not with this rewatch but like i don't know how long ago it was i ended up finding that one little flash here was none other than joe this joe right here this hotness you guys like talk about a glow up i mean he was still cute here but like damn where he went to oh also james franco i think this is where i first officially was introduced to him i know he had done like freaks and geeks prior but i never had seen that movie before or that show prior oh, i've never seen that show i guess i should correct myself so i think this is like the very first thing that i saw him in because i think after this whenever i would see him and other things i'm like oh it's from spider-man it's from spider-man and of course now it's just like frank james franco I, I have since then you know separated him from you know spider-man stuff we get the whole origin story within spider-man we get the great villain goblin uh by the wonderful william defoe he does an, of course an amazing job here just being able to go from just the regular guy to the goblin i mean that whole like mirror scene was so cool you guys also you guys i'm not even gonna lie spider-man because wait spider-man 3 i am going way back on my stuff i don't know spider-man 2 no spider-man 3 because it's goblin i mean he was already the goblin like mini goblin goblin jr might have been spider-man 2 Whenever they're making an, an omelet, MJ and Harry, that one, that's how I learned how to make an omelet, you guys. <laughs> like, I, I, I took out my um, senior uh, memory book, like, so, so, I mean, 2005, you guys. Okay, so it's held up pretty well, plus it's very, very huge. So I have my movie tickets from when I was um, in high school. We have none other than... Spider-Man. That's me in middle school, you guys. Oh my god, look at those pants. Okay, you guys. I was feeling myself in those bright ass silver <laughs> pants. So yes, you guys, I just wanted to share that really quickly. As if this video isn't long enough. I start told you guys I wasn't gonna linger and what did I do? I lingered and that's nothing new. Um, anywho, you guys, so that is my list. That is how I rank all 11 Spider-Man movies. Let me know down below, of course, what your ranking is. Again, my list isn't the right list. It's just my list. And let's just be friendly down in the comment section below. All right, guys, that is it for me today. Until next time, see you guys at concessions. Bye.